Well, he won and lost a quarter of a million pounds and became so desperate he considered suicide. He's addicted to roulette machines, a controversial terminal somewhat banned. Betting shops in our region have hundreds of them, raking in millions in profits. Well, now one addict has told Look North how he became hooked and how it almost destroyed him. Our news correspondent Peter Harris has this special report. They call them the crack cocaine of gambling, high speed betting and high speed losses. Because it's all, you know, 30 seconds, bang, 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 20 seconds, you know, when he's gone, 100 pound, 100 pound, 100 pound. I recall one incident where I uh, got out of my car, I walked to the cash point, took out 600 pounds, went a short walk to the betting shop, went in there, put the money into the machine, loaded it all in, cleared the money, gone, and I was back in the car within six minutes. 600 pound got and I felt, you know, I can't even describe to you how, how I felt. It's, 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 it really is bad, you know, it's, it's ruined my life up to this point and I, I don't intend to let, it, to let it continue. Now in therapy, Michael charts his progress in an online blog. I wouldn't like the thought of being a part-time dad. He's 29 and from Middlesbrough. <laughs> The Labour Party thinks councils should be able to ban these roulette machines or fixed odds betting terminals from bookies. What concerns those who object to these roulette machines is not just the fact that people can lose so much and so quickly, but there's also been a clustering of betting shops in town centres and often they allege targeting people with the least money. Which sounds contradictory, but the campaign for fairer gambling insists the machines have spread the most in poorer areas. It claims Hartlepool has 73, with 81 million pounds gambled in a year. Carlisle 55, with 61 million gambled. And in Sunderland, 110, with 122 million pounds staked. Much of which is won back, but campaigners say it has to stop. These companies here, and the machines that they have, these clever, devious computers, strip almost 13 million pounds out of the Teesside economy, where it's vital, where it's needed, where we've got massive cuts. That's completely wrong. As for Michael, he thinks the machines should be for members only. He hopes for him, the worst is over. I'm not going to lie, I've had a few dark thoughts along the way, if you understand where I'm coming from. Um, Thankfully it didn't go that far because I managed to use my children and harness, you know, my love for them and, and the, you know, that they shouldn't have to go that far because of, you know, the addiction itself. Peter Harris, BBC Look North. Well, earlier I spoke to Peter Krask, who represents the Association of British Bookmakers, and I asked him if they deliberately target the poorest communities. It's uh, completely untrue. There'd be no point in opening a business like ours in an area where people haven't got any money. But also, just before Christmas, the health survey for England was published, and that proved that claim was untrue because it showed there's more gambling in areas of higher affluence than there are in areas of least affluence. We have spoken to one addict, though, who lost £600 in just six minutes. I mean, don't, don't you have an obligation to police those people who might have a problem like this? I think we've got to keep things in perspective. 65% of the population gamble in one form or another, and we have 8 million customers. But one problem gambler is definitely one too many. Our staff are trained to spot people and talk to them in confidence and uh, try and help them overcome their problem. Ultimately, a customer can ban themselves, self-exclude themselves from a shop, which means they'll never be served in there for the period of time they've chosen. But our new code of responsible gambling adds new measures. For example, someone on a games machine from March will be able to set a limit on the amount of time they play for or the amount of money they lose. That's the first time that's ever been introduced. So that takes a, a lot of, of self-control for, for, in some cases, people who, who have lost control. Well, we want people to come and bet safely and enjoy themselves, but the people who get into trouble, we are committed to helping them. And to self-exclude yourself, you fill in a form, you provide a photo, uh, and the staff keep it behind their counter. So if you go in, they will refuse to serve you. OK, Mr Crass, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you very much. And tomorrow morning, BBC Newcastle's breakfast show will be asking if people addicted to gambling need more help to protect themselves.